Welcome to White Lecture Online. Now let's use the technique that we've learned to solve systems of linear inequalities on a word problem. So here's the way it goes. We have two dishes, spaghetti and salad. And for each serving of spaghetti, there's 100, uh, what we call milligrams of calcium and 5 grams of protein. For the salad, for each serving of salad, there's 200 milligrams of calcium and 3 grams of protein. Of course, with the salad, we probably have a little bit of ham and cheese in there or something like that to provide the protein. So, it asks how many servings of each to provide at least 1,000 milligrams of calcium and 30 grams of protein. So, just like with any word problem, we need to realize we're going to have two variables, x and y, to represent the number of servings of spaghetti and the number of servings of salad. So, let x equal the number of servings of spaghetti. And then we can let y equal the number of servings of salad. And now we need to come up with two inequalities. Just like with equations, we need to provide two inequalities because we have two unknowns. So, if we get 100 milligrams of calcium for each serving of spaghetti, then 100 times x will be the total number of calcium, milligrams of calcium, that we're going to get with all the servings of spaghetti, plus 200y, that'll represent all of the milligrams of calcium we'll get from eating salad, and that will have to be greater than or equal to 1,000, because that's what we mean by at least. We want at least as much, so it's equal to, if it's equal, well, if it's exactly 1,000 milligrams or greater than. At least means at least that much or more. We do the same for the protein, so we have 5x plus 3y must be greater than or equal to 30. Again, we want at least 30 grams of protein, and those are the two inequalities. So now what we want to do is we want to graph those inequalities, and therefore we first want to get the boundaries. So we're going to find the equivalent equations. So for the first one, we get 100x plus 200 y is equal to a thousand and now we want to put that into the format of y equals mx plus b so we saw that for y we get 200 y is equal to negative 100 x plus a thousand and then if we divide everything by 200 we get y is equal to minus one half x plus five and that would then be the equation of the boundary of our first inequality. So now we find the second boundary and to do that we end up with equation number two and that would then read 5x plus 3y is equal to 30. And again we want in the format of y equals mx plus b so we move everything over to the other side except for the y. We get 3y equals minus 5x plus 30 divide both sides by 3 we get y is equal to minus 5 thirds x plus 10. That's our second equation. All right, so now we're ready to graph those two boundaries. So we put them on the xy plane. And uh, our first equation, y equals, y equals minus 1 half x plus 5. So we find plus 5. There's 5. The slope is a po oh, negative 1 half. So that means we end up hitting the x-axis here, x-axis, y-axis, at minus 10. And so that would be the first line, line number one. Line number two, y equals minus 5 third x plus 10. Ooh, I'm running out of room here. Let me move that up just a little bit. Like that, so there's minus 10. And the slope is a little steeper, minus 5 thirds x. So that means we go, uh, we go down 5 and over 3, down 5 over 3, so that hits at minus 6. And there's the other line. Okay, that's line number 2. So now we're looking for the regions that satisfy both of those inequalities at the same time. And to do that, oh, maybe one more thing. One more thing. There's another restriction on that because we can't have any negative portions. So that also means that equation number three, we need that x must be greater than or equal to zero. And equation number four, y must be greater than or equal to zero. 
because obviously we can't have any negative portions, which means that anything to the left of the y-axis means that x is less than zero, so we definitely do not want to include this region right here because you can't have negative portions. And you can't have anything less than y, uh, or you cannot have anything less than zero for y, so we want to get rid of this region there as well. So notice now that we have four inequalities, it makes a lot of sense to just scratch out what doesn't belong and then just leave as blank what does belong to the solution because otherwise it gets pretty messy. All right, so what we want to do now is pick a point so we can check equation number one. Where's equation number one? Right here, equation number one and equation number two or inequality number one and inequality number two. So we want to check these two inequalities to see if if the point will lie within the region that satisfies that inequality, which region does not. And I always like to pick the point 0, 0. makes it easy. And so for inequality number 1, we're going to plug in 0 for x and 0 for y. So it's 0 plus 0 greater than or equal to 1,000? Question mark. And the answer is no. It is less than 1,000, so this does not lie within the region. The other side lies in the region, so this is the region we don't want. It does not satisfy the inequality, so we scratch that one out, like that. And then finally, for inequality number two, again, we're going to plug in 0 for x and 0 for y and see if this point lies in the region relative to this line. And to do that, we plug in 0 plus 0. Greater than or equal to 30, question mark. And of course, the answer is no again. So there was no here, no here. So that means that this point lies in, not in the region that satisfies inequality relative to this line right here. So that means this region is also not valid. That means the only region that's valid is the region that falls to the right of the y-axis, above the x-axis, and bounded by these two lines right here. So this is the region, yes, that we're looking for that satisfies the two inequalities, which means that you can pick any point here. We'll give you a certain number of servings for x, which is servings of spaghetti, and a certain number of servings for y, which is servings of salad. As long as you work within this region, you will be fine. For example, if we pick, uh, ooh, that should be plus 10 and plus 6. Let's say we pick the, the point 6 and 5 right there. So that means x equals 6 y equals 5, 6 servings of spaghetti and 5 servings of salad will definitely give you enough of both calcium and protein. That's what that means. And then, for example, if you take this right here, or you take, uh, let's say, 4 and four and 2, right there, 4 and 2, 4 servings of calcium and 2 servings of, of uh, spaghetti will not give you at the same time enough calcium or enough protein, or maybe of, not enough for both of them. And that is how you solve the problem. Okay. So if we go ahead and turn that instead of equations, we want an inequality. So we have inequality number one. That's this one right here. And that would mean that y must be greater than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 5. So y must be greater than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 5. And for the equality number 2, we end up with, uh, let's see here, y must be greater than or equal to, y must be greater than or equal to uh, minus 5 thirds x plus 10. So the fact that you're looking for values of y that are greater than x and values for y that are greater than x, you're looking for a region that's above or to the right of the two lines that are drawn. And so therefore... We got the x, 3 and 4 equation. Uh, 3 and 4, so th that is self-explanatory, right? You're looking for all x's that are greater than 0. So I already did that on my first example. Okay, so you want me to draw it separately? All right, there's my y-axis, there's my x-axis. And so for equation number three, you want all values greater than zero. So this is x greater than zero. This is y 
y greater than zero, so we're looking in the first quadrant, so to speak, because of the conditions three and four. And then for the other two equations, we had this line right here, and we had this line right there. And again, looking for y, so this, uh, let me number the equations, so this one here was number one, this one here was number two. So for both of them, you're looking for y greater than some function of x. In that case, you want to go either up or to the right of the two lines. So since they're slanted like this, going to the right and up would be the region that satisfies these two inequalities. So therefore, you get rid of all this stuff over here. That if the line goes on. And so this is then the region that satisfies all the inequalities. So much easier. Like it easier this way? I like my I method. <laughs> <laughs> okay.